Chip Chandler with Panhandle PBS, and I'm here today with Elizabeth Davis, a Channing native who is working on her first original musical herself, Indian Joe. So thank you so much, uh, Elizabeth, for joining us. It's my pleasure to be Tell here. Tell me a little bit about your background. You're from Channing. I uh, am from Channing, yeah. And you got involved in music pretty early on, right? Three. Three years old. Uh, my parents made the drive from Channing to Amarillo every week and had me in Suzuki lessons here in Amarillo. And uh, yeah, we're committed to making that part of my, the core of who I was. Yeah. We'll, we'll cover your college years in a minute, but sure. you, eventually you, you found your way to New York and I did. in the company of, of the musical Once mm -hmm. uh, that was on Broadway in 2012. But you started early on with the show. Tell me about that process. Sure, I, I did a cold audition, which it often doesn't happen that mm -hmm. way, that you just walk in and you audition and, and book something. That must have been a very special show to be part of. It was an incredible production to be a part of, yeah. I think that the show, and none of us really knew this, I mean, we knew that it was special, but I think that it changed um, the sound of Broadway. It gave permission to to sound differently, mm -hmm. to say, oh, let's create a little space here uh, for something else to be welcomed in a powerful commercial way. And that, uh, of course, shaped my aesthetic without me knowing it. Yeah. Well, let's back up a little bit. You went to college at Baylor? I did, Sycamore. Like Yes, I did. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, and that's where you met a man who is having a profound impact on your life still, right? Yes. Talk to me a little bit about uh, Indian Joe and this, and this musical. Absolutely. I met a guy named Joe Lightfoot Gonzalez, or that was the name that he went by all of his life until at 65 years old, uh, discovering that his real name was Narciso Alala, and that was his birth name. Mm -hmm. um, I met him, though, when he was... Uh, homeless on the streets, living under the I-35 bridge, which was very close to the Baylor campus, and a lot of, a lot of the homeless population kind of came and went under that bridge. We started a friendship, a very tumultuous, for my part, codependent friendship, um, where in essence, and I didn't realize it in my nav naivete, that I wanted to fix this person. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me fix you. That's what's supposed to happen here. And not realizing him saying, how can I take this girl and, t you know, just let me steal her car, let me do this, let me take advantage of this person that doesn't have a clue, mm -hmm. which I didn't. And, you know, heaven knows how all these years later I can sit here and tell you that I became his executor and his ashes are in our apartment in New York City. Um, how do people become family? And that's the journey, journey of the musical and the, the very painful writing process of how do I understand what I have gone through? It started as a writing process my, uh, during the year I was on Broadway with Once. And it's gone through a development process, a, a really meaningful development process. We've been able to have one full production at the Goodspeed Opera House. Uh, we've partnered with the Cherry Lane Mentor Project. Uh, actually, my mentor through that program was Enda Walsh, who won the Tony for writing the book of Once. Mm -hmm. We also partner with New York Stage and Film and they're an incredible organization that uh, have been a process to devel of developing, I don't know, 50%, 50 to 70% of the musicals that are commercially successful in the city at this point. The Johnny Mercer Writing Foundation, the Rhinebeck Writers Retreat, all of these people um, have been a part of giving me the space to discover what it means to write the book, music, and lyrics to mm -hmm. a new American musical. Wow. How would you describe the musical then? Uh, the sound yeah. is it the I would indie call it, singer songwriter. I would call it pop folk, mm -hmm. pop folk Americana. Um, the sound is the Texas Panhandle meets New York City. Um, that is who I am at mm -hmm. this point in my life, and so that's the sound that is coming out of me. Um, how is Joe's story told through the musical? Is it a straightforward narrative, or do you? Yeah, um, it is chronologically straight through, mm -hmm. we, it, it, we're not jumping back and forth in time necessarily. Um, the person of Joe is being played by an actor named Robert Salas, who is a Texan, and who uh, is the ethnic makeup that Joe was, which is North Mexican as well as uh, half Native American. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe is half Choctaw, uh, Robert Salas is Navajo and Apache. So there's something extremely authentic and real about looking this gentleman in the eyes. Um, and uh, to be honest, the first time I met him, I, I couldn't speak. Um, 
it took my breath away. The, the, the resemblance was pretty uncanny. Yeah. So he is playing Joe. Um, I play myself in two versions, younger Liz and Liz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're able to watch, hopefully, a person look back on her younger self and look at the journey through, God willing, informed eyes and watching a younger person deal with her mess. And hopefully the specificity of it will allow anyone watching the story to access the universality of it. So you're not just singer, songwriter, composer, author, you're starring in it. I, I say this, Chip, I say, as an actor, if someone's not telling the stories that I think are important to tell, then it's my responsibility to tell them. We have an amazing cast of people coming together. Our director is a gentleman named Don Scardino who has done everything from being Jesus in the original Godspell for a thousand performances to being one of the original directors and producers of 30 Rock to, um, I think, he's in L L.A. directing a pilot right now. Um, and this is his first theatrical production after coming back from L.A. from having an extremely illustrious directing career out in L.A. Mm -hmm. It's a new journey, but the journey is only mm -hmm. being taken because the story has to be told. And I think that in our current culture, um, where our country is in such a divisive place, and as a person who is a tried and true Texan, and also as a person who's lived a decade in New York City, it is my honor and my privilege to be able to tell a story um, from that attempts to allow people to see each other. That's what I would love to do, to create a piece that allows the Texas Panhandle be told in the most glowing way possible, um, and then also bring in the other parts of myself and hopefully have a holistic picture. This is the journey from naivete to enlightenment. This is a journey of from being um, homeless to having a home. This is the journey of um, This is the journey of a person finding love in a variety of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I think that anyone that wants to go on a journey of change should be involved with or, or at least join us in this journey. Mm -hmm. Something else I want people to know is that there is a philanthropic element to the show. Uh, the Joe Lightfoot Gonzalez Memorial Fund has been set up through Baylor University. And in essence, we are working towards an endowment that will enable us to send a student to Baylor in honor of Joe, mm -hmm. who was never able to go to college. So how can people get more information about the show? Sure. If people are interested, they can, uh, they can email myself or our general management team at indianjoemusical at gmail.com, and we'll give you all you need to know. All right. Well, I look forward to hearing more about the progress of the musical. Thank and you, Chip. Keeping in touch with you. Thank you Me so too. much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure thing.